Joshua Mike Bamiloye. Joshua is a drama minister, gospel music producer, and content creator. He is the director of the Mount Zion Music Studios and Mount Zion Comics. He is also the supervising editor of the Mount Zion Film Productions. He has released six albums, three EPs, and singles, and has scored background music and sound effects into over 82 movies, mostly under the Mount Zion Film Productions. Joshua is the second son of the president of Mount Zion Faith Ministries, Evangelist Mike Bamiloye, and a graduate of Bowen University with a BSc in Mass Communication. He is married to Tolulope Mike Bamiloye, and they are blessed with a son. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Joshua Mike Bamiloye. Please put your hands together. Don't stop until he takes the mic. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Amen. Uh, thank you so much for the honor. Thank you for inviting me. When I was told um, mom was here last year, so I had to call her and say, where they invited you to, I'm there now. And I said, ah, fantastic. Thank you so much, daddies and mommies. I'm very grateful. Uh, when the speaker said, um, someone and someone, no other person qualified. I'm like, <laughs> we have many, many, many qualified people to speak on that entertainment, but it's an honor for me to just be here and I consider it a privilege. Briefly, let's just say a word of prayer and say, uh, Father Lord, in this, sec in, this, in this session, speak to me. In this session, bless me. In this session, speak a word that will um, change something for the better in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much, Daddy, for that powerful um, uh, session as well. I was also blessed. As he was talking, my mind was just browsing around. Okay, where is the problem? Where is the problem that I can be <laughs> a solution to? We're talking about arts and entertainment. Arts and entertainment. I'm sure many of us are thinking, okay, Joshua wants to come and talk about the actors and actresses and the musicians, but we are, we are going a bit deeper than that. Amen? We are going a bit deeper than that. We're going to be using this passage, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, which says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. So, we're talking about entertainment. And uh, it refers to the industry that includes every or various forms of media, music, movies, television, theater, literature, digital content. It recognizes that entertainment has a powerful ability to shape beliefs, attitude, values. And this is something that God said we should. He said we should go into the world. Some people are here right now and they feel entertainment is not for me. No, arts and entertainment is not for me. But then, here is the thing. There are, I hope we know that entertainment and art is a language. Do we understand that? There are, it's a language. And so there will be certain people who will not hear the language of the pulpit. Or there will be a lot of people who don't understand the language of the pulpit. They understand the language of visuals, the language of sound. Very typical example. We all know children content, right? Um, if, you want, if you want your child to learn about, um, about, let's say, you want him to learn about the Lord's Prayer or mathematics or whatever it might be, how do we pass it across to children? Do you tell children, um, let's say a two, three-year-old, sit down there. Now, you see, in life, you need to understand that the Lord's Prayer is very important. Now, say after me, our Father who art in heaven. A three-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, what would the child do? What would the child do? <laughs> you, are, you are here, you'll be looking here. But then, bring in triangles, colorful triangles and boxes and say, our father who got in heaven, what would the child do? You are speaking the child's language. There are also a lot of people on this earth 
that if you go to them and say, excuse me, sir, I just want to share the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ with you. What would they say? I, beg, I, beg, I, beg, I, beg. I, I think we see that a lot now. Now, I'm not using this to, um, to, uh, to downplay the power of communication. All right? I'm just saying that th- this word, language, uh, entertainment is also a major language. And there's some people who that is all they hear. That is why, very typical example, when we're talking about Akbar Allah, that was shown many, many years ago, decades ago. All right? There were Muslims that were following this series. Now, for them... They loved the entertainment. But then, the message in the entertainment is sinking in. So, it is safe to say that entertainment is actually packaging. And whether we like it or not, packaging is important. Amen? Packaging is important. You will never see a company selling bottled water and the wrapper around it is color yellow. Why is it always blue? Why is it always blue? Because they're trying to tell you blue, cool, pure. If they use yellow, what comes your mind first? Urine. <laughs> Will you buy it? <laughs> Imagine they sell the brand and then they want to sell a bottle of water and then it's yellow. And then the, the, the name of the brand is in red on that yellow. <laughs> but if they want to sell orange... Orange, uh, uh, an orange drink. Even Fanta that doesn't even have any orange, actual orange content in it. I, I hope you know Fanta does not have actual orange content. <laughs> okay, just to. But then, what's the brand packaging of Fanta? Orange. To tell you that orange drink. Amen. So whether we like it or not, if you are in this world and you want to communicate, you need to understand the language. When Jesus wanted to communicate to the people, several times he used parables. He used parables of things that people could understand. The man that wants to get married, the farmer with the crops, the, which one again? The, the prodigal son, that's the relation between father and son, the wheat and the tears, etc. These are the things that the people there could understand. And so he told stories around that. What was Jesus doing? He was packaging the message you wanted to pass across. Amen. Amen. So entertainment plays a huge role in shaping popular culture, influencing social trends, and providing people with enjoyment and relaxation, and of course, inspiration. In in the world today, if they want to influence the society in any aspect, they don't necessarily... In fact, if the president comes to speak and says this is what he wants everybody to do. Hmm? And then, everybody's favorite celebrity does something else. There is a very good chance, uh, of course, if there, is no, if there is no repercussion to it, there's a very, very good chance that the world will be swayed more by what the celebrity does. The celebrity doesn't have to do much. Just say, wow, I just went into this into this um, environment, and I love the land, I love the environment, it's so lovely. In fact, you all should be here. Wait till tomorrow. Amen. That's why they usually call some people social media influence. It's, it's a literal name. What are they doing? Influencing. So you see the artist today, he's doing a skit, but then he's talking about the, the app he used to transfer money. In your own mind, you're watching a funny skit. But then he says, in fact, give me that app. Which app is that? Oh, pay, Abby. Well, anyway, what have they done? They passed across the message of, oh, pay to you. You, you watch the skit, you will laugh. Ha, 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 ha. The next thing you know, you see, oh, pay billboard. Let me even download this, this app. Amen? Am I making sense? All right. So now the instruction given to every Christian is to evangelize. Evangelism and mission work isn't just for a group of people. I hope we are aware of that. When Jesus was ascending and then he gave the great commission, he didn't say, now, fellow Christians, evangelists, pastors, bishops, etc., etc., these are the people that are going to evangelize. Missionaries, you are going to evangelize. The rest of you, don't worry. Leave the work for the evangelists. He said, 
go into the world and he was speaking to each and every one of us. But then the question now will be, how do we shine as light? How do we shine as light? Isaiah 49b says, I will, I will also give you as light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. So the Gentiles signifying the people in the world, all right? Not just people in church, the people in the world. So it says, so the question now is, how do we shine as light? Because not, not everybody is going to sing. Not everybody is going to be in the choir, correct? Not everybody is going to be uh, in front of the camera. Not everybody will do the theatrics. So how do we as individuals shine as light? In, in the olden days, when people wanted to preach, it was a direct communication. You go to the person's house, all right? You knock on the door, correct? You enter, you preach the gospel. The passage says that if they don't accept, what do you do? Leave, dust your sandals, on to the next. Either that one, or you gather the people together and you speak direct communication. And then it evolved. What am I trying to do now? I'm trying to let us understand where all of this starts from and where we are right now. Now, from there it evolved because as at that time, reading and writing wasn't for everybody. It was usually one person that would bring the scroll. Are you getting me? It would bring the scroll. All that letter to the this, letter to the this. I hope you know it's not letter that they printed and shared. It was one person that would read it to the congregation. And then you would read and everybody would say, hmm, we understand. Now, time passed. More people could read and write. So therefore, there, was, there were tracts, magazines. The Bible was able to be printed. Amen? So we have, we have so that was when tracts was. How many of us were in the era of tracts? How many of us were uh, born in the era of? Nobody knew the era of tracts, except our daddies and mommies. If you do the era of tracks, let me see your hand up. What? We are so sc- Ah, Okay, Gen Z's. This is what tracks means. Should I explain what tracks are? You see those small pamphlets, right? And they will just write, it will be one catchy title they will, they will put. Where is your end? <laughs> At the end of it all, where do you go? And then, oh, my brother is even showing me one track. You know, and then someone will just come and drop it in the, on the table and then leave. And someone will just, sometimes they use illustrations, they use drawings. That era was actually very effective. I think you've seen it in movies before now. They will just drop it in the boss's table and then the boss will come. Who put this here? Come, come. I have told you several times to keep your religious fanatism to yourself. How many of us know what I'm talking about? Anyway, so that was another era. So in this era, you don't need to actually go to someone's house because now your tracts, your magazines, your books, etc., can go farther than where you can reach. All right? Then the world evolved again, and then we got to the era of audiovisual, television and radio, radio and television. And then in this era, of course, the only issue with this era was it was kind of expensive. All right, it was expensive. It wasn't for the masses. I mean to use, but it was, the, it was for the masses to consume. So in that era now, a pastor can preach, all right? A pastor can preach here, and his message can go to several countries, all right? A pastor can preach on TV, and his message can be broadcast. That time, we had specific channels. We had NTA, which one again? AIT. Ah, wait, was AIT even that, that first era? You know, that time it was mostly specific, specific, and that was the era that Agbaranla, I think that was what helped Agbaranla as well, because the stream by which we consumed information was very narrow. So where was the entertainment on this channel? So everybody has to watch this particular channel. They have like five, six channels. That time you set your TV. Who was alive in the era of TV signal doing your antenna like this? Gen Z, <laughs> Gen Z and scanning TV for <laughs> There was once an era where you put your antenna like this. Once you get good now, stay, 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 stay. See? Don't move, don't move, don't move. You were not there. <laughs> if you were there, wave to Jesus. 
Okay, more people now. Oh, we are getting closer to this era. Yeah, yeah, that was an era. When you buy a new TV, first of all, you press, there are two buttons you will press to scan. So to scan. NTA. To go again. Uh, you know, it, so it's like, shh. It will show another channel. It, ah, two channels. Up well. <laughs> so that was another era, okay? And then the gospel was able to move further. You don't have to go house to house now anymore, right? And so now, the next era is what? The internet era, the digital age. Almost everybody has smart TVs now. We're in the digital age. And now this is where, this is where, this is where the gospel is now meant to be most effective. Why? Because the power is no longer just in the hands of a few TV channels. The power is in your hand now. We have social media now. Amen? We have social media now. We have people that can say, an average person that can say, I have 700 followers. It sounds small, Abby. It sounds small, Abby. On Instagram, if you have all across all your social media platforms, okay, first of all, do we all have social media handles? Uh, okay, okay, we are safe. So, across all your social media platforms, if you have more than 700, if you count Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of just pack everything together. If you have more than 700, raise your hand up. Raise it where? Raise it. Wave, wave, wave. Aha. Okay, now my question now is you feel it is small, ba? If 700 people enter your house today, what happens? Can your house handle them? No. So it's not actually small. So some people that are saying, I only, I only have 300. I only have 200. But if that 200 should come to your house today, can you feed all of them on the spot? No. What am I trying to say? Those numbers feel small because you are looking at people that have 20K, 50K followers, 200K followers. The point I'm trying to make now is God has given you, some, some people feel they are not pastors. Some people feel, I'm not a pastor, I don't have a congregation. But my father, we say, those followers you have, that's your congregation, though. Whether you like it or not, that's the congregation. So the question I'm asking is, what do you feed your congregation every week? Who knows what I just did? We all understand. Aha, aha. Next, see you next week Sunday, folks. God bless you. The next Sunday again. See you next week Sunday, congregation. God bless you. What am I trying to say? We are in the era now where God has given us power. Now, it doesn't have to be making skits all the time. It doesn't have to be, um, what else again? It doesn't have to be songs. What knowledge, what information? Some people are so interested in entertaining people with bad news. For example, <laughs> when, when a news broke out that there was um, uh, this company, I forgot the name of the company now, we're producing a new, okay, WB, uh, Warner Bros. We're producing a new series of comic books of Superman, and Superman's son now is going to be gay. I mean, I was new that era. You really see that post. It was everywhere. And so people started posting it, posting it. Oh my God, the end is here. <laughs> they posted it and shared goodness out of that post. And I didn't share that post. Why? I was, I was, I was sad. I wasn't sad at that post itself. I was sad because the energy that we use to post this kind of news, if we had used it to post any other godly content, Amen? If we had used that same energy to post any other godly content, it would be also everywhere like this. So now what did we do? We posted that and then went back to our daily lives. So you, all you did is just post that bad news and then you're back to your daily lives. I'm bringing things down now to the average person. Entertainment and art is not just those on stage. It is not just those holding microphones and singing. Entertainment itself is just the packaging. The message, the message is what is most important. So the question is, how much have you put out that message? Sure, not everybody will read 
if, for example, if Agbar Allah was a, was, a, was a book, it might not have moved as much, but because it's in the visual state, it's, it's the way it moves is, it was just like flowing, just flowing to the audience. So the entertainment space isn't for skits, actors, musicians. Those are the front runners. Those are the faces behind the work. There are several roles behind the scene. I've talked about social media now and I've talked about that, but you know that there are also roles that are behind the scene that are not necessarily in front. For example, for example, in the art of drama, Everybody knows, for, some, for example, people ask me all the time, Ah, Joshua, we don't see you in front of the camera. Joshua, are you still in Monsignor? Oh, can okay, you act more? Kilo shele. We see your brother, we don't see you. I'm like, ah, hey. If you know what is going on behind the camera, behind the camera, behind the camera, we have the director of photography, correct? We have the director. We have the sound man. We have the welfare. We have transportation. We have all manner of groups. And we also have executive producers. Who are the executive producers? You know, it's not God bless you that does films. I hope we know. It's not, the anointing will give you the grace, but it's not anointing that will buy the equipment. Are you, do you understand what I'm saying? Someone is financing these productions. Someone is financing these productions. There was, there was a time... One, uh, a, gospel music, a gospel movie producer wanted to make a movie. And then she came out there to, during this same Superman issue, she was also part of those that were frustrated because she felt a lot of Christians put their energy more into sharing the bad news than actually supporting content creators. So what am I saying? Part of the roles is support, financial support. It doesn't have to be the big support. But what, how, what have you put down for those in the field? If you are not there directly, if you are not in the arts and entertainment directly, what have you actually done in support to those who are actually in the field? Amen? Because entertainment itself shapes the future of the next generation. It shapes the future of the next generation. It creates a standard in the world now. Entertainment is creating false beauty standards. False beauty standards. You have to look this certain way before you can be termed as beautiful, or before you can be termed as handsome, or before you can be termed as brilliant. We are right now, to me right now, we are in a pandemic of, we are in a pandemic of, um, of trash podcasts. Trash podcasts. This is, a personal, this is a personal experience for me. I had received the vision to start a podcast. And I'm, I'm sharing it now so that we can understand that God drops these things in people's hearts. Now, to start a podcast, I didn't know how, I didn't know where. So I didn't dwell too much on it because there were also several other things I was doing. But then, last year, the vision got clearer. And then we, we started the path to building the studio that we're going to use, etc., which is going to now start in August. But then, while the vision was getting clear to me, I now started seeing podcasts everywhere. Podcast, podcast. A few girls will just come together and then begin to tell you that if you are a virgin at 24, something's wrong with you. And these people have beautiful set designs. Amazing set designs. SM7B microphones. The technical people know what I'm talking about. That, can, that mic is not cheap. They'll pack four of it on their studio. And pew rubbish. And the sad part is, it is still entertainment and art. And because of the packaging that is involved in it, people will listen. People will listen. In the church today, not in every church, of course, but there are a lot of youths with ideas, creative innovations, I was saying it at the backstage that part of the reasons why many of the youth today are a little bit confused is because they are in new territory. They are in uncharted territory. Right now, it's no more just you, either you are singing or you are acting or you are preaching. There are several other things now. And as God is giving these ideas, they don't know how to execute it. Then to now make matters a little bit more technical, 
they see people in the world executing the visions and ideas that God has given them. But because there is no encouragement here, because there is no support here, they are tempted and driven out. I hope you know that every good and perfect gift comes from God. Because you saw it in the world first doesn't mean they came up with the idea first. I hope you know. Because you saw it in the world first doesn't mean they came up with the idea first. So what am I trying to say? In the church today, in our organizations, it might even be your own children. Don't box them to the, or to the, to the innovations that you already have or that you've already seen. Very typical example. I was born in Mount Zion. I was born into the ministry, all right? But my parents didn't say, you are going to write scripts. You will act and you will write scripts because you are born here. Whether you like it or not, you will write scripts. I hope you know I don't write scripts. Yeah, I, I've, I've never written a movie. What did they do? They observed. What is the interest of this boy? Then they noticed I like to draw. The day they realized I enjoyed drawing, rather than me drawing on the walls of the house. <laughs> they got the paintbrush. They got the drawing board. They got the, oh yeah, draw. And each drawing I did, because of the encouragement I received from them. Now, I'm saying this now as my parents, but it might not be the parent. It might be the pastor. It might be the elder. It might be the Sunday school teacher. It might be anybody. But because I received the encouragement from them, each time I drew, no matter how terrible the drawing is, I'll go and show them. And trust, trust Popsy now. Wow! <laughs> there are some things I drew then that as I grew older, I knew Daddy was lying. <laughs> this is terrible. What is Wow! How long did it take to do this? Ah, ah. What? Sometimes when they traveled abroad or traveled to any country and then they came back, before they came back, I would have designed something on, on cardboards, put it in the house. Welcome home, draw an aeroplane. Then they will come back. Wow! <laughs> so, they kept encouraging me and on and on like that. When they discovered I had interest in music, it's not, uh, uh, Shabi is drawing, you're supposed to be drawing. Stay in that one now. No. Rather, okay, it was a very small keyboard that time. It was just from year to year. Casio was the name of the keyboard. Yeah. You play. And I played. Oh, music lesson. Okay. It took me to the music lesson, primary three to primary five. And I kept developing. By the time I got to JSS three, by the time I got to JSS two, my brother was in SS one, the drama leader in school. I was playing keyboard for the stage drama. Now, at that point in time, I had never seen it before. When I mean play keyboard, I don't mean as the drama is going on, you're just playing, I just want to be where you. I don't mean that one, no. I mean, there was a drama they needed to act, and there was supposed to be a car on, on the stage. So how do they achieve a car on stage? They placed chairs. <laughs> that day was very funny. They placed chairs in the rehearsal. Dami had already said, let's just rehearse. Use your mouth to do boom. But Dami came to me, Joshua, how can we do this thing? I said, when we get home, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. My keyboard had the sound of a car starting, the sound of the car screeching to stop, the sound of cars passing by, so I had programmed everything on the keyboard. So on the day of the drama, I brought the keyboard to school. It was a Wednesday. I brought the keyboard to school, and I was, I was so scared because that was the first time I would attempt that kind of a thing. Anyway, so then the person that was to act, the bus conductor, <laughs> he came on stage to act. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, and everything. And he was using the corner eye to look at me. That, hey. Because he cannot go there and do ta -so 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 -so. Yeah. And we had already told him, don't do ta -so -so -so. Just, just. So, it was, hey, well, yeah, well. so all the people entered, they did like this. They entered, arranged plastic chairs, and they sat down. Of course, we had rehearsed the movements, how the body will vibrate when the car starts. So, by the time he started, the idea was he was supposed to start the car, it will not start, then he will go to the back of the chairs, act like he's pushing it, and run enter and move. But imagine doing this. <laughs> so I was ready, my hands were. Then he now went. After, oh yeah, you have to, you have to go, oh yeah. 
as he, as he turned his hand, just started. So the, whole, the sound resonated around the entire hall. It was Oitama Baptist Church. So imagine someone doing this on stage and you're hearing. Everybody was like. It is again. Everybody was like, ah, are we really hearing? He went to do that again. He did it again. He did it again. And he ran. And everybody did like this. And the old school went. The old school went berserk, like, what? And then, as he did like this, you hear, yum, yum, ah! the old school went wild. That, so, <laughs> amen, amen. So, that was not the end. When the police came to stop him again, and he did this, they heard, Grrr! and the old school just, before we continue the drama, it was about 10 seconds, because the school was just, you know, that, that, that is art, right? But then, imagine if back in primary school, my parents had said, is it not drawing you say you want to be drawing? Please, pick one. You know, that encouragement from there, it didn't stop there. That was GSS 2, GSS 3. By the time I got to GSS 3, SS 1, my father came again. Because that time, we we're, were, were doing this Makosa, <laughs> Makosa stuff with the keyboard. And he came and said, by that time, Monsignor was doing the movie titled Blood on the Altar. 2006. He said, ah, this is good, this is good. Do something for blood on the altar now. I was like, say, do something now, do something. And he gave me a tune to do. And I just recorded it with my friend that was there. And they connected it to the editor's computer. They recorded it. Of course, that wasn't all the sound they used. There were other sounds. But that was the beginning of my ministry as a background music and sound effects guy. I did the first one. Amen. I did the first one. I'm on number, I'm on number 90 something now. Sorry, the bio that they read, they wrote 80 something. That bio I'd written it two years ago. I just copied and pasted. But I'm on number 90 something film now. Of laying sound. Now imagine the encouragement that was gotten as far back as I want to learn in music. Now my father does not produce. He doesn't produce. Yes, he used to compose. Before I even, before I was existing, all the uh, bar, it was Popsy that, it was, so he, he, pro, he, he composes. But he didn't produce, he doesn't play the keyboard, he doesn't sing on stage. But what was his own role in my ministry? Encouragement. Encouragement. So, the role that you are going to play in your craft or in this art and entertainment. It might not be physical. It might be one young boy that will just come to you and say, this is my interest. And your response will determine if that will kick off or it will die. So you don't actually know what... Because of what I've experienced in my own life, a young boy came to me, ah, he's an artist, he draws. His drawings were not beautiful at all. But I noticed he was using the mouse. Just because of what I had experienced with my parents, I determined I was going to buy a graphics drawing tablet for this person. And I was in Lagos. I, I saw one of the graphics tablets. I asked for the price. I sent it to the guy. And he was so encouraged. He's a young boy. Well, the encouragement he received, he, he might not become the greatest artist, though. In fact, I'm talking of drawing. My drawing has not died, though. Before, I was just drawing and having fun. Now, I'm drawing Christian comic books for children. And I just released another. I just released another last two weeks ago called Bible Stories with Auntie Tolu. I took my wife's face, drew her face, and then put children around her. And so, different, different illustrations, you will see that it's my wife's face, but it's in cartoon form. So, the drawing ministry started about three, four years ago. So, you see how everything is just evolving. But what am I trying to say? Your role might not be the actual thing. But when you see any soldier, when you see any young soldier or whatever it might be, showing any interest, sadly today, so many musicians out there, watch their interviews, what would they say? They started from... I, that, when I hear that thing, I'm always heartbroken. Of course, some of them, the rebellion has been has been biting them from day one. 
there will always be exceptions. But there are several people also who, it's discouragement. They were simply not encouraged. Probably it was the style of their music. We are very fond of saying, this is, this is, this is what, what ungodly tune is this? <laughs> what ungodly tune is this? Or else you don't realize that the reggae that we are singing in church today, a couple of years ago, if you try to play reggae, stop that nonsense, please. Why? Am I speaking here? The reggae that we are here today. Now, we are, we are, we are playing uh, tumba to a good extent. Praise and worship. Most praise and worship today, by the time they start. Back in the days, if you try it in church, what are you doing? Are we, are we here to play? Stop that nonsense and clap your hands, tutu. The end, that is it. If you go beyond that tutu, you have sinned. So, a child now comes and says, he has, he has this style of music. Rather than, rather than discourage what my parents did, they were guiding it. They were guiding it. Because a child, of course, is still young too. Or a youth is also still young and just developing. Even they also are just developing their style. So rather than cut it down, guide it. It begins to go off track. Call it to order again. But keep going, keep going. But call to order. When we do that, so that is an encouragement. It could be in financial aspect. It could be in material aspect. But if you are not going to be, I mean, I, I, because of the short time I had, I had to focus on the average Christian. I didn't want to focus on those that are on stage because I believe by grace of God, God will help them. But for all of us here, if you are not going to support physically, prayer-wise, financially, make sure that you are doing your best in that field. Because this is an entertainment is what the devil is using today. My time is up. It's what the devil is using today to shape the world. We are talking about, L- how many of us know about the LGBTQIAWXYZ? Do you know that it is not in the academics that this thing was actually introduced? Do you know that it was not, it was not in, in schools that it was introduced? Schools did not introduce it. Schools did not start it. Community meetings did not start it. It would, have been, it would have been canceled on the spot. What started it? Entertainment. Art and entertainment. So if something, as I'm sure by that time, there was an analogy that they gave that time. If you watch something on TV, <clears throat> this is how you even know. Some of us say, no, I'm not affected, I'm not affected. Like, ah, me? Ah, LGBTQIA, WXYZ. Lie, lie. But probably you're watching Netflix. Eh? The first time you witness that kind of thing, maybe two guys. Ha! Ah, You think they are discouraged. <laughs> but you continue watching the series, Abby. Or let's say you cancel that series with the blood of Jesus and start another series. You see something else like that again. Instead of, ah, it's now, uh uh-uh. You see the third time, what happens? The fourth time. Fifth time. What, what has happened? It has shaped you. you. You don't know, but it has shaped your thinking. It has. Because arts and entertainment, media, music, things that sink into, these are the things that sink into people's hearts without your permission. Without your permission. You find yourself singing one song, and you're wondering, wait, because you just heard it for five seconds in an eatery. Five hours later, Ah, wait, what is going on? <laughs> that is the power of art and entertainment. If they had just put the actual words and they just said it, you will be disgusted. <laughs> but let them put sweet melody. That's the packaging. It sinks into the spirit. So, what am I saying? Art and entertainment right now is actually the greatest shaper of our future, of the future of the next generation and the next generation. It's the greatest, it's the most powerful. This LGBT thing started small. It started subtly. Now, it is right beside the flag of USA. I don't know if you saw the post. Now, you will see the LGBTQ flag here. You will see the US flag here. Same size. 
What happened? It is still the same arts and entertainment. So if the devil can realize that this is actually a weapon that he's making the best use of, we as Christians must not be complacent. Amen? So let's just rise up on our feet. My time is up. Just rise up on our feet. Let's just uh, rise up on our feet. What happened? Oh, <laughs> ah, no, I might not be as privileged as. <laughs> we will still have space for questions and answers, but I don't want them to bring the paper here. <laughs> Let's rise up on our feet. Now, so the question, I mean, the, the prayer point is now going to be that, Father, in every area that you want me, because now we've already established the fact that Jesus actually made use of entertainment in preaching his message, which means we cannot ignore it. And we can see the power it has today. So the prayer now would be, Father, in any aspect that I am meant to be useful. You might not even do much. But maybe it's just one statement you made to a boy or to a girl. And that statement you made was what made her into what she is today. We're talking about Nathaniel Bassi and Joshua Selman. And now they are selling out a stadium of 28,000 people. If you hear Nathaniel Bassi's story, you will share of how his spiritual head encouraged him. Because he was at the point where he was playing sax for Asha, right? But then what, what happened? There was, there was a push. There was an encouragement. So whatever aspect, be it that you are actually going to be in the forefront as a music minister or as a, or as a, or as a drama minister or, in, or a skit or a Christian content creator or a Christian social media influencer, in any aspect, so let's close our eyes. Father, in any aspect that I am supposed to function in this battlefield, dear Lord God Almighty, let me discover and act accordingly. Everything now is timed. There is actually no more time. If you, there are some opportunities right now that we dare not miss. So say any aspect, any area, any position that I am meant to take, that will create the impact that you want me to create in this art and entertainment sphere. Dear Lord, let me discover, let me be alert to discover it and act accordingly. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Thank you very much. God bless you. Please, you can do better with that. You can do better. You can do better. Wow. What a wonderful teaching. What a wonderful teaching. So please permit me, before you sit down, we want to quickly present the plaque. And I want to bring up uh, Pastor Chuks Ogba, the assistant, regional youth pastor, regional level. Please celebrate God in his life as he's coming to do the presentation. I want to appreciate you on behalf of Province 19 for a wonderful presentation, a ball of wisdom presented, effectively communicated to us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. God bless you, sir.